Need some ice for sure. We're a little early to, uh, why don't you tell them where we're going today? We're going to the stash, and uh, I think we're also going to go check out Quick Stop, right? And we're going to go to the Quick Stop, yeah. yeah. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun. <laughs> That's all of us. Uh, I don't even know if we're all in the shot. Hey, no idea. So they, they know we're here, and so we're going to go over shortly. Yeah. Uh, go hang out and see the podcast studio and see how amazing everything is. See how they help podcasters, new or experienced. It's going to be a good time. guys nothing much what how are you what brings you to this part of town we we came for you guys we okay. wanted to interview you and kind of get a gist of the podcast studio we had met i'm gonna say close to 10 months ago you were talking about comic book men but you're yeah. talking about the podcast and i'm like this sounds amazing and you being quote unquote right down the block it just seemed like well let's get in an interview mike and ming yeah for sure this Absolutely. is all about yeah so what do you think Awesome. Um, this, is, this is awesome. <laughs> this, is, this, is awesome. this is really what cool. my man cave should look like. Right. You guys started podcasting 2000, was it nine? Uh, technically 2011. Kevin started in 2007. Uh, that tell was him Steve Smodcast? Dave came, came around late 2009. Yeah, Smodcast started in 2007, like way before, pretty much way before anybody even knew what this stuff was, what podcasting was. I remember reading it, and I'm like, what is he doing podcasting? Like, yeah. really? Yeah, what is like, some I'm... kind of radio show? But I was like, well, I can pull it up on a web browser, and, and then people start listening to it. And I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. He's, you know, he's talking about fisting dolphins on the first episode. <laughs> and, um... I mean, everybody's got a podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then everybody. He, yeah. And everyone right. should. That's, yeah, but that's back then, the it was him and, like, Ricky Gervais was big back then. That was pretty much it. And Adam Carolla Adam and Carolla. Uh, Joe Rogan. I mean, those were the and Mark Marin came a little bit later and and you know made his bones, but I mean now it's it's across all spectrums. Yeah, now they're huge. Like you know, um, the Smodcast podcast or it was so known within the podcast yeah. universe. Joe Rogan as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah like he's and he's got you guys familiar with um, Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Two bears, yeah. one cave. That just oh my god. Them two as best friends is the most hilarious thing that I've ever seen. <clears throat> I love that podcast. But, yeah, I like the portability of it. Like, you can listen to it or watch it anywhere, anywhere now. Anywhere. You don't have to be at your radio. You can be anywhere and stream this stuff. Put it on. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that re extends recording it. You can record these anywhere as well. We've, uh, yeah, yeah, we've been yeah. in some crazy places, uh, airplanes, um, you know, bars. And a I mean, we said we just down in New, New Orleans. That was weird. That was fun. <laughs> when we go on these road trips, we're like, we need to put a camera in the car, yeah. mm -hmm. and just film our conversations because we get into some pretty ridiculous conversations. Yeah, that's what we did. Yeah, yeah we did that uh, when Kevin shot uh, Jen's Not About Reboot. We had to drive down to New Orleans, and uh, we had a camera on us. It's like, well, why not get a dash Might cam well. and turn it around yeah. and you just film yourself? And that to me. We got to do that. We got to get a camera the, specifically yeah. for that. GoPro, something, you know. There's we so drove many through the songs I make up in car rides that I just cannot remember. Yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> well, we were trying to find a, an abandoned psychiatric hospital, and just we pull up on this kid who's skateboarding. We're like, hey, kid. Where's the abandoned? And the, the guy, the kid's like, uh, I gotta go now. And yeah, I, don't, just, I don't know creepy old man. Uh, it was yeah. him. It, it was, was him me. asking. I was like, he's like, was yeah, that that? I'm mean, calling my dad. Yeah, I mean, look, just look, he just, he looks like a child molester, and it was a white fan. <laughs> That's bullshit. That that I do one, not. The one that you're. I look like a cannibal, but not a child molester. Uh, I, d I respectfully disagree. <laughs> no, no, you were, you were like, you had your, your face pressed up against the back windshield, so it's like, that kid's like, holy crap. Oh, the, there's no other windows in it. No, no, oh, it's the just windows. Van. <laughs> just yeah. Like, ah. it was, yeah, it was a white. And it said free white. candy on the side, so My you know calls we were those safe. The Sandusky shuttles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Um, back <laughs> too to the soon, psychiatric man. Too hospital. Soon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so we started uh, a little bit after we did about 2011. And where were you? Where were you recording then? Like, what are those early shows? Back at the comic book shop. Yeah, yeah it was back in Jay's Silent yeah. Bob Secret Stash. It was a perfect mm-hmm. place to record. We had a poker table back there. Uh, we were playing a lot of Hold'em tournaments around that time. And uh, tell the, him Steve uh, Dave was doing it out of there too. So yeah, and Kevin would record back there whenever he was in town. And, uh, yeah, it just made sense to do it right in the comic book shop where we were anyways. Right, because there's, like, a back room behind everything, right? That's no, it's not a back private. room. It's, it's a back area. Back, back area. area. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they show it in the show. Yeah. I've never been to the Secret Stash to anyone. For well, shame. you're I, here. I, I, we're we're, yeah, going, we're, ten we're going today. Yeah, we're yeah. going today. You're but ten um, minutes away. <laughs> Ming and I were talking about this from back in the day. And, again, this, me and Ming have been in so many places, and I never met him. But they had the Chasing Amy premiere in Middletown. Yeah, was at the that, UA. Um, yeah, the United Artists. Uh, it was there was a little. Was it two screen cinema? I think or it, it was, was really a, tiny. It was a tiny. Cinema. No, the UA. No, really? No, because yeah. there was. Or was uh, it just one? No, there were ten. Ten? Was, are you talking about the one in Middletown where the Target is now? Yeah. No, that was a, a tenplex, man. Ten. Okay. Oh, See, yeah, way you, smaller than that. When I was like twelve years old, I used to go in uh, for the the matinee, like ten o'clock in the morning, and I'd stay until midnight. You know, going and seeing theater, all the theater. Oh, theater yeah. hop. That's what we did back then. Yeah, because that's what we hopping. did. There was no assigned seating. You, right. you went in there, and if no one noticed that you were, you know, slipping into all the movies, you got away with it. Yeah. Especially in the summers when you weren't in school. Mom would drop me off oh, on yeah. the way to work, stay there all day, and pick me up. And Yeah, that was I mean, fun to be yeah, a kid. I, I, I saw Creep Show like three times that day. It was great. Yeah, that was cool. So that was way back in 97. Uh, they just wrapped shooting. It was kind of a combination of... Uh, kind of website fan screening slash cast and crew screening. Well, Ming, you ran the View Askew. There was the website, yeah, the website right? The yeah. board, yeah. With the, with the message boards. Yeah. And I used to be on the message boards all the time. I went on this. is like the greatest idea. And and Kevin would pop up and, and Brian Johnson and like Vincent Pereira. And it was just great to be able to interact yeah. with the people in the movies. And that was kind of your brainchild. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, Kevin's whole Kevin's initial idea was to have some kind of chat room. He wanted some way to interact with fans around the world, which was very, very progressive of him. There was no Facebook, no Twitter, no Instagram. There was no way to interact with anybody famous, uh, or much less anybody in Hollywood, or your favorite filmmaker, or your favorite filmmaker who came out with a dirty, uh, dirty language black and white movie a few years ago. But uh, yeah, he had. Uh, he had a strong desire to communicate with his fans, and uh, he saw the internet as the ultimate way to do it. So, uh, I, but I was like, instead of a, you know, a, I was like a chat room where it would require you to schedule time, you know, uh, large amounts of time to interact with people in real time. I was like, why, I, why don't we just put up a message board and you go and answer questions whenever you want? You right. can answer one, you can answer 10, you can answer 100, you, whatever. And uh, I thought that that uh, that ultimately worked out really that was, well. That was the like the origin of the AMA. So pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. you would be talking to other VSQ fans, and all of a sudden you'd come back in the morning, and Kevin's talking yeah. about all your stuff, and you're like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you would make friends, and uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I think people got married. Yeah, uh, met there, met there and got married. It was pretty. It was pretty awesome. So, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was a pretty crude looking text based message board but it uh you know later on like 20 years later it looks exactly like reddit does now so i don't know where my check is if i get lost in the mail <laughs> but i want some of that reddit money i mean having access to people of higher level in hollywood you know actors directors writers because of you know social media they're accessible now people are like yeah, yeah not, started not that. calling somebody's agent to get a conversation with this yeah, person. No, you, if the luck of the draw yeah. is that they're going to answer you or talk to you, it's right there. Yeah, and unfiltered, yeah. immediate. It, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was kind of the birth of social media for I sure. I mean, look at, look at when you follow stars on Instagram. You know, you comment on their photo, they might write back to you. Yeah, I, I love that we've <clears> become so... I don't I don't know if I call this advanced, but you can get blocked on Twitter by the president now. <laughs> and you say something he doesn't like. Yeah. Like, the really? president will block you. So surprising, yeah. right? Oh, oh, my God. I have to get that. I have to make that happen for myself. I don't right? think it's that hard. That's what she you said. You probably could just say hello and he'll block you. No, <laughs> it doesn't I mean, matter what you say. I mean, you got to say something but a little more controversial than that. But, yeah, he's going you know to I mean? block he's, people, he personally gets... block people, citizens, his citizens of his great mm-hmm. country. <laughs> and then people, you know, the, the people who are on the block list are like, why am I getting, uh, you know, audited by the IRS? What's going <laughs> on here? <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, you gotta, why are those guys in black suits across the street from my house? Hi. The car is off there. Yeah, there's a windowless van out there, and Ming's got his face pressed up against the back. <laughs> Hello. Window. When was this coming in the backyard for Shared Universe, and you're like, you know, we need something local, something where people can come in? Because if you look at your, your dynamic, it's like, and you put it right out there. We're here for new podcasters. Yeah. We could teach you stuff if we want to know. Yeah. If you're advanced podcasters, it's great because you could even come in and we have the resources mm -hmm. here for you. So when did that genesis kind of come about? Was it when you're in the back of the comic book shop and you're like, what else can we do to bring this more forward? The, the real origin story came when a uh, gentleman came up to me and said, uh, this is um, about season four or five. Season four, I Something think. Something like that, yeah. Season four of Comic Book Man, and we were on hiatus and we were – uh, gonna start shooting in about like two months and he said what would you do if the comic store went away your television show went away what what would you want to do just off the top of your head say it right now and this is it was like really weird that he he popped this thing at me and I was like off the top of my head I'd want to open a podcast studio because Ming and I were talking about it and we'd been doing it for like five or six years five five years at that point we're in the infancy of podcasting. We're still in the infancy of podcasting. I mean, it's been like 12 years, and it's still nobody's tapped, you know, what the ultimate podcast is going to be. So um, Ming and I were talking, like, you know, making plans for later on, the, the next step. And I said to this guy, I'd open a podcast studio. He's like, where? And I said, ideally in Red Bank, but, you know, Monmouth County for sure. Because we're in in the sweet spot, New York, Philly, and you know, we're we're right here on the East Coast where everything's happening. Yep, and yep. Uh, he said, "Let's take a walk." And we went outside. We took a walk, and there was this empty building. He and I, I said, "I would love to do it right there because it was three floors and a basement." And I said, "That's my ideal podcast studio right there. We we could split it up into six you know studios that would be going full time." Um, we would have, you know, second floor would just be office space, and the third floor is like an apartment for people who wanted to come in and, and be our special guests, you know, and they stay up there. You know, they fly in from Vegas, and they, they stay there. Like a whole and, floor of, a, like, a green room. That yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the bottom That's would have nice. been, like, a cigar bar where people would have come in and just been, like, chilling down That's there. Brilliant so idea. <laughs> I was like, I would love that. Now, I mean, we found out that the building cost 1.5 million dollars without renovations and it was just like a hulk and he's like tell you what start small and that's when we had our first studio and it was just me and me we we weren't renting the space out we were just podcasting from there and we put up all our stuff and it was really cool and we call that fraudulent studios because <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman who asked me that question, he's like, look, I need a, um, and I'm going to give him a shout out, Todd Puma. Todd Puma, you are the man. Um, he rented the space. He's like, you guys take this. I just need a mailing address for my business. He's like, podcast, then have me on every once in a while. That'd be cool. So uh, he was paying rent to the guy, to, to our landlord, who didn't own the building anymore. He, he had owned the building like years before, but he had sold it and he came around and he was renting it out. And the true owners were like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, What's <laughs> oh, man. He's like, squatters. Yeah, guys. exactly. You guys are squatters. Get the hell out of my building. And Ming and I were going to squeeze him for some money. Like, yeah, we'll get out when we feel like it. But we're like, all right, we got 20 minutes to get the hell out of here. So yeah, they're literally taking a wrecking ball. To yeah, the, the, the ball came up and they're like, hey, what's up? Uh, you're you're going to die if you stay up there. So we're like, taking all our stuff out of there. And uh, so that was our fraudulent studios phase, which actually it was great because, you know, it, it gave us a taste for what we wanted. Right. So like three months later, we found this place and we came in here, started to slowly build it up. Um, you know, we got day jobs, so we're, we're doing everything, you know, at night and we finally get it around. And this is the funniest thing because uh, we had our our open house and it was around Christmas time, and huge success. A lot of people interested in coming in and doing podcasts. Our first official podcast was New Year's Day, yeah, uh, two thousand eighteen. And my wife was like, "You know what? Let's start off the the New Year right. Let's podcast on New Year's Day." He was in town. I was in town. We all agreed to come and. We come in and we we take the elevator up, 
and we hear this like someone showering in the um, in the hallway. We're like, what the? What's going on here? There was a leak. <laughs> there was a pipe had burst on the fifth floor, and we actually saved the building because we came in and uh, were podcasting that day because there was nobody else. Right. They no, wouldn't have whole, found it until the next day. The whole building would have flooded. And the whole Everything would have been would have destroyed. Flooded. Everybody, wow. Everybody's office would yeah, have been gone. This would have looked like a huge aquarium, you know, with a uh, little diving guy in, in the bottom, you know, <laughs> next to an anchor. Um, we and got some free rent out of that. That's what I was thinking. Uh, no, you, know, we you would didn't. think, right? You saved you the whole th- couple yeah. of months. Um, goddamn no. building. Mm. But they, uh, they kind of let us do whatever we want here. Yeah, now. we're so yeah. You know, we, we're, we get rock star access, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> and then from there, it just took off. And you know, we're we we do want this place to go twenty four seven. I mean, that's kind of unrealistic, you know. Ming has to sleep sometime. Not really. <laughs> I don't sleep. <laughs> Even before that, uh, you know, we, we would get people either coming in the store or at conventions going, hey, man, I, I love your podcast. Uh, I've been thinking about starting one. What do I need to do? And we, we would give them a very quick lesson about what kind of gear to get or answer their questions, but it, it, uh, it wasn't in-depth enough. Wouldn't it be cool if we had a space and we could teach classes and really uh, show people how, how this is done and all the stuff they would need and give them – adequate time for them to learn and uh so that's that's eventually what happened how um how popular are these classes and do, do people are they able to take your classes and really go off and oh watch yeah a really yeah, successful yeah absolutely show? yeah absolutely yeah I, I i mean we impart with them every you know 10 years of knowledge and uh into a two-hour class so it's it's uh yeah it's split up into two parts we, we we impart our knowledge answer any questions for the first hour and then the second hour uh we actually record their first show so Which, it's 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 hard to hard to teach a podcast class and that actually podcast. So right, yeah. right. It's it's really advantageous because again, like you were saying, anyone can podcast anywhere. You just grab a microphone and you know kind of hook it up. But it's nice to have some sort of podcast university. Yeah, so for speak. sure. Yeah, like do's Absolutely. and don'ts. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, and it's a lot of it's common sense. A lot of it is just getting in front of that microphone. And I like to think of it this way: that when we they do their first podcast. It's like they've got training wheels on. They've got Ming and me steering them in whatever direction they want to go. Like they tell us where they want their podcast. You know, I want to do this, this, and this. And then we just make sure that they stay on track. It's nice to have a studio, though. <laughs> it's got to be the sweet spot to know that you have a dedicated space at all times. We have a space that we're working on that was kind of just gifted to us right like yeah, he's us. really uh hooking us up with a place for us to actually film and record whatever we want shout out to mark fenton yep uh, <laughs> handmade art studios we haven't moved in there fully yet we're still in the process of, of, of getting things set up the way we want it and we don't want to invest in things that we're unsure of we don't want to put the money out if we're gonna not see the type of return that we're looking for sure. because yeah. you might buy all this high-end equipment but then if it doesn't take off the way you anticipated, you're out all that money and you're not going to see a return. Yeah, and a lot of that is uh, trial and error. Uh, yeah. Luckily, Best Buy and Amazon have very liberal return policies. Yes, they do. So <laughs> if you want, if, uh, you know, if there's a mirrorless camera or something you want to use and it's not to your liking, yeah, re- send it back, man. Yeah, like, we're not, it just didn't work right. Yeah, yeah We're <laughs> not going to say shout out to Best Buy for your liberal return policy, but shout out to Best Buy for your <laughs> liberal return policy. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the ultimate kind of proving ground is uh, yeah, Best Buy and Amazon. Uh, but beyond that, I check out you know YouTube reviews. People are reviewing every piece of equipment yeah. ever made, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll compare it to you know maybe something that might be lower end. That you're like, oh, that's good enough. You know, I don't I don't need to spend six hundred. I can spend three hundred on this. Right. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of trial mm-hmm. and error, or just asking around really. And uh, having the dedicated spaces, yeah, it's huge. Uh, we were lucky to have the back of the comic book store, pretty much whenever we wanted. But um, especially b- before the store opened. Or definitely after hours, but a lot right. of people don't have that, and we're—I mean, we're kind of—we're banking on that. In fact, uh, you can record in your kitchen, your basement, your spare room, mm-hmm. but it's not ideal. It's, no, I mean, I don't like—I don't want to have to clean up when I'm done. Yeah. I want to set up and be set up. Oh, 
How was the Funko place? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Which one are you talking about there? HQ and Everett? The HQ and Everett. Oh, my I, God. I, we, when I was re-watching stuff, I was looking, I was like, oh, I'm so jelly. I wish I was there. Yeah. Oh are, you a fa- you're, are you a fan? Are you a collector? I, have you're a, a, you're I, have, f- I see some that I have in here. For you're, <laughs> a, you're, like you're a fanatic, if you will. I have those in there, and my girlfriend is also into Funko. Oh, so man. We I'm have a, them everywhere. How many would you say you have total? Ballpark. Maybe about seventy-five or something. Oh, okay. It's taking up a wall. You're in your okay. infancy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still short. I'm still yeah, yeah, short. yeah. I met someone. They're like, yeah, I got eighteen ninety-nine. I'm like eighteen ninety-nine. They're like, yeah, they were, we're looking for that one to make it nineteen hundred. Wow. <laughs> Actually, they should just a hundred and one, make it an even two thousand. Yeah. For God's yeah. sakes, what's the matter with you? Yeah. But that's what they were at. They were literally at eighteen ninety-nine. Yeah. That was weird. Just starting off because before I was like, now she she encourages it. She's like, oh, well, look at that one. It's on sale. Look at that one. Yeah. Now. I have a few. Like I, I think there. It really blew up the the, the pop craze. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Like, there's a pop for everything. And you know, I have several. You yeah. know, my kid, he likes to collect certain ones too. But we're not like walls of them. We have lots of stuff that we collect, but we don't have. I don't even have the space for the stuff that I collect currently. Let alone more stuff that's a whole series to be able to put anywhere. So. Um, but I see a lot in here that I'm I am impressed with that uh, the Simpsons one is is definitely really cool. Kang, the Kang and, Kodos. and Kodos, yeah, that is definitely. They came a out really with cool the uh, one. eleven inch Baby Yoda. I plan on getting. That. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's yeah. gonna get that. So it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing place. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a, if Disney and Funko got together and it, uh, opened up a retail store. It, I see the big Godzilla Disney they and, had it in the uh, the Batmobiles. Disney and oh, every place awesome. else had like an orgy and this is their offspring. They had a litter of <laughs> everything cuz they had and uh, Brian Mariotti the uh, president. That's I spell I pronounce his name right. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Love Brian. Brian's great. But his office is all pop culture stuff and he's a lunchbox guy. He had uh, and, and a Hanna Barbera guy is huge mm-hmm. in a Hanna, and especially the uh, the lesser known Hanna Barbera characters. Ape. Oh, he had great oh, ape. 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 He had the grape ape Wheelie. lunchbox. Oh, oh my god, Wheelie wow. and the Chopper bunch. Of course, he had all those things. Uh, everything that you can imagine. And you're looking around, you're going, "Holy crap!" And he had all the Batman's from uh, Japan. Oh. He had these. Just they were porcelain and they were they looked like they should be hanging on a Christmas tree in some <laughs> demented dimension uh, th- these were gorgeous and the the tin toys he was a tin toy fanatic too mm. or is a tin toy fanatic he's, he's still with us he's, he's a great guy um, <laughs> but his entire office is all these things and like almost no Funkos around except for the, like the prototypes that he's approving and I'm like Holy crap! I, I'm like I died and went to heaven. This guy <laughs> gets me. Yeah, and he's a collector. He's a fan, and uh, yeah, his office is one that one uh, that I wish I, I I wish to have one day. Instead of walls, is all display cases lining hmm. like yeah. every That's every wall awesome. surface in his office. It's pretty impressive. Um, but uh, that's uh, you know I saw that I was like man this that I mean no wonder they're so successful, they care about the fans they're collectors they're right details matter to them that's yeah the thing. one so, of us yeah. I, I that, never... that, that's that's what it is if you are in the culture and you start something about the culture you're going to be detail oriented in mm-hmm. it because you 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 would want it's this as a fan it. of course so you want to deliver this to the fans and that's right. you know right. knowing someone's in charge that has that. When you when you like something and you collect something, it's just to get this certain item. It's so pure, and you just love it. And you're just like, oh. And people are just like, I don't get it. Like, don't you have five Spider-Man figures? It's like, yeah, but this is a different one. It's still Spider-Man, but it's different. You, this you, is the Iron Spider. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with you? Right, Did you see that the suit's a little bit different? Right, there's Look at the, the spider symbol home. on the front. It's different. There's the end of the Spider Verse. This is, uh, you know, this uh, Spider-Man Noir. You know, the, yeah, this yeah, is Todd McFarlane. All that, all that. This one is, um, this is Ross Andrew. For God's sakes, what's right. wrong with you? Yeah. Oh, my Can't spider, you see? my Spider Ham. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Spider-ham, I need yeah. to have when you're when you zero in on the thing that you love and getting. As much of it as you can. Walking in, this was very simple for you to set up, right? Like you just kind of walked in and were like, "Hey, and yeah, let's go." Put out the microphones and you were ready to go. So, yeah. how easy? How easy is it for somebody who wants to do this? And you know, they're in the area, they want to come drive twenty minutes and and do a podcast. Uh, how it's easy. easy is it yeah, for you that? head online, go to sharedunivers.com, book a slot uh, online, and uh, yeah, you show up. There's an engineer here. 
and yeah, you and you just record. So, um, it I really mean, is plug and play. Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, that's actually, what we tried uh, to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, any show prep uh, production, you know, that's all up to you. If you want help, I mean, we'll obviously right. help you out. But, uh, you know, everyone kind of dictates the direction of their own show. Hmm. And, uh, when, you know, once you get going, it kind of, uh, you know, you, you settle into a pretty comfortable groove. Right. Uh, have your guests meet you here. And, uh, yeah, it's it's nice to have kind of a neutral location where you can invite. If you have if you do have a guest, an outside guest that you want to interview, uh, rather than like, hey, uh, all right, uh, come to my house. We're gonna record in right. my basement, right. or my bedroom, or my kitchen, <laughs> or you know, unless that's your thing, unless yeah, that's what your podcast, podcast sure. involves around. Yeah, but if it's a roundtable discussion in your kitchen, and that's like part of the show, then that's the show. But like I said before, bedroom talk. having <laughs> dedicated actual space, now, it's it's a great, it's a brilliant idea to, to have it like this, where you could just book time, yeah, and go do your thing, and if you have like a twice a month podcast. You could just come do it here. And yeah, go absolutely. Do, edit it yourself, and and you're good to go. Or yeah. you so. can have us edit it for you. They, and, all right, yeah. full service. Yeah, One absolutely. of the things that I loved about this idea was that if you're doing if you're doing it in your house, like your laundry room, you're like, oh crap, I got to do laundry. You know, it becomes right, right. then it becomes a chore. You know, the mm-hmm. the whole podcasting thing but if you've got a destination where you can just go and not have to worry about all the right. ins and outs that's that's what makes this place it's like this is not this isn't a chore this is something i look forward to and people come in here and they they get to look around and there's this place has got a lot of eye appeal and it's that's the beauty of it i want to be at this level for what we get like, yeah, it's great. Just and the setup. Like you're saying, if you're in the laundry room and your wife's coming in to do laundry and you're just kind of like... The dryer's hey, on I'm in the trying, background. I'm trying to podcast here. Yeah. And she's like, I'm trying to do the wash. Yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, if you wouldn't leave bacon strips in, in your underwear, we wouldn't be having this discussion. <laughs> bacon strips in the underwear. How many... Uh, Classic move. How many podcasts do you usually have coming through? Do you have uh, any, like, we, regulars? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I think we're recording, uh, like, 20... Uh, about 25, 26 a week. Uh, we've launched, we've helped launch like close to 50 shows at this point in the last two years. And uh, yeah, it's picking up. It's been pretty awesome. That's great. Have they had a good level of success because they are coming in here? Like, is, have any like kind of come in and done their podcasts and not really reached the level that they've been? Or because they've come in here, they've found that they've already been at a kind of a more... I don't want to say elite, but they're kind of more well off because they're coming in here to do the podcast. I mean, it depends on the topic. You know, some are more niche than others, but uh, we have we have a few that are poised to blow up. We feel yeah. Um, so lesbian Nazi hookers, you know, <laughs> stolen by UFOs. A little bit, little on bit. the next podcast. I don't know yeah. if that's necessarily niche. I would, lo- I, would tol- I would totally, I would totally, I would totally listen to that one. Yeah, I, think I might even give them a free lesson. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We might have to do that as another channel. That's, I stole that from UHF. <laughs> I, I I would love the Conan the Librarian podcast. I, I'm surprised no one started that one yet. Yeah, Wheel of Fish, to. come on, man! <laughs> Don't you know the Dewey Decimal System? <laughs> Thankfully, uh, we're able to use some of our uh, you know larger than normal social media following to help the market as well. So that's a that's an edge that I, th- I believe we have over anybody else who might decide to do. Something similar. You mean steal our idea, Ming? Those bastards. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm looking at you. You did have someone there. steal your idea in this area because I was at Reboot over in Asbury Park when Kevin announced at the end of the Quick Stop. Right, he has some sort of like podcast. It's a podcast theater, not, theater, a, theater, not, right? a, studio. not a studio. So not it's a studio. it's more like a kind of. It's a live podcast theater. It's a venue for podcasters. Uh, where so if they you want to do that live. and go on the road, like tell mm-hmm. them Steve, Dave, and all that, you just go to the theater and people can line in exactly. and yeah. to listen. Right. They got like 60 some odd seats in there or so they're they're anticipating. And, you know, yeah, it's it's different than us. So. Right. So it's not competition. It's more like no. it, it, it. It's an yeah, extension. Together. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I mean, we're poised to send our, some of the people who started in here is like, hey, why don't you go perform live? Uh, we, there's a whole venue. Yeah. For that, where you can go sell tickets and uh, get a taste of live podcasting, yeah, which, which is a totally different animal, but just as fun. Yeah, it's well, having a live audience a is, is definitely. Yeah, well, you're performing at that. Yeah, point, yeah, right? you're and not totally just sitting different. around having a conversation. You now have to have a little bit extra yeah. to provide for a viewing audience. Yeah. So. You have to entertain. Yeah, yeah exactly. You can't exactly. suck. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can't, yeah. Be you can't, can't be boring. You also can't be Sidney no Brady where it's like, oh, the red light, oh, no. 
you know. You can yeah. suck. You don't want to suck. You right. do you not want to You don't want to bomb right. on stage. You don't exactly. want to go there and, like, free rotten egg night and, and yeah. bomb at the theater. <laughs> yep. You buy the eggs from the quick stop. Uh, Does an egg night. <laughs> yeah, why, why did Kevin Institute that night? What's going on here? This sucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm covered my, in uh, eggs. But it's going to be cool because you're going to have the quick stop, and then you're going to have the new RST video yeah. that's yeah. coming back. And then the Smod Castle. And then the Smod Castle. So it's literally it's... like a view askew, like strip mall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they getting Dogma the out? For Halloween. Because I know Dogma is kind of hard to get right now with the rights for like streaming and everything. Coming to America. We were talking about oh, well, well, well. Yeah. the strip club scene on the way here. Yeah. Where you're just sitting there looking at Selma Hayek. That must have been a horrible day on oh, set. One of the greatest days of my life, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, currently Dogma's out of print on DVD. It's not yeah. streaming. Uh, tied up in Weinstein Company uh, legalese right Ooh. now, I believe, and that's why it's very hard to find. I have an autographed copy. Yeah, I would signed keep, by Ming you. Chen. I would, I would keep it. I would keep that. It's, uh, you know, it's it's worth a lot right now. I, I imagine at some it's point it's worth about one hundred and twenty-five uh, bucks. Yeah, really? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's been long out of print. And, Anyone um, want to buy a copy? I could sell my non Ming Chen signed copy. <laughs> Let's quickly plug. Um, where can people come to book? Um, they can go to a shared universe uh, dot com. Yeah, That's, for sure. Yeah. Uh, follow us on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, at A Shared Universe. And, uh, yeah, it's very easy. Go online, book it up, and uh, come, and, come and have fun. Podcast. If uh, you need a little instruction, uh, come take a class. Uh, usually me and Mike are here to instruct that class. Sometimes you get both of us. And, uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we're here to help everybody out. We, I love this medium We're here to so believe much. You. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, we're we're ready to believe I'm not, you. I'm, I don't steal stuff from people, so it's great. Yeah, I might we, take that sweater. <laughs> yeah, that is a fantastic. Sweater. Yeah, yeah. I think ultimately it boiled down to. Uh, we, I mean, we've been having so much fun doing this in the last ten years that we want to show everybody how much fun this is as well. And uh, we believe that once you, want, it's addicting. Once you, once you do it once, you'll want to come back weekly and do it and podcast and release episodes. And uh, you know, once you get that great feedback, it's like, oh, I heard your podcast. Uh, uh, you guys are great. Yeah, when uh, people recognize uh, your great. voice. Yeah, they're like, "Hey, I listen to your podcast," and you're like, "What?" Oh, like, fair. boom! Cool. Yeah, awesome. And this is so professional that anyone yeah, who would absolutely. ever want to go to the next level, or even just figure out if you want to do a podcast, instead of going out and maybe getting your own microphone, and just coming in here, yeah. experiencing it from people who've been doing it for ten years, it seems like just a great option. Yeah. And then again, if you're like a professional you know, option, if you're unable to set up and leave it set up, this mm -hmm. is a great place to yeah, come in. Absolutely. So. So Gentlemen, that, thank you for, yeah, for having great. us for this really appreciate interview. Really appreciate it. Was thank you so time. much. Now, where are we going? Uh, now we're going to the stash. <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob's going, going down. Stash. We're going to watch where you walk. <laughs> we are walking the streets of Red Bank, New Jersey. Right over here, they filmed the swing scene in Chasing Amy. And we just passed by the little tiny movie theater where they used to hold the Volgerthons. And if you've never heard of Volgerthon <laughs> as a Kevin Smith fan, they used to throw these little shindigs here in Jersey that you could see all these Kevin Smith films, which is nice because you used to see the little ones like Big Helium Dog, Vulgar, A Better Place. <laughs> Trying to look for first parents bloodshot. Rise zero. Turn to warrior number four. They don't have any. It's just cool though. Oh, look who it is. <laughs> I like I like all the uh, view askew stuff that's just you know, sprinkled around the floor. That is one of the best graphic novels I've ever read. Ever. Do you know what movies are? <laughs> my friend Dahmer. Durf Durf yeah. Back Durf is one of my favorite of good. all time. Oh, they got some damn good books up here too. Look at all these books. Uh, oh, wait. Sandman. Look, it's the monster from Tusk. I didn't even see him up there. So there it is. It's kind of just like unassuming, isn't it? Oh, I've always wanted to buy something at the quick stop. We're gonna have our chance. It reminds me of 
a store. It's my first time ever going to the Quick Stop, so it's like really uh, kind of surreal for me, having lived in Jersey all my life and never coming to the Quick Stop, but here it is.